Hello, my name is Julie Fry, and I'm the curator at Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens. 2023 marks the 125th anniversary of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. In recognition of this tremendous achievement, we are issuing a 10-part video series beginning in March with one running each month throughout the rest of the year. Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company was founded by F.A. and his brother C.W. Cyberling. F.A. and his wife Gertrude were also responsible for the conception and creation of Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens, their family home for 40 years. In this month's episode, we're going to talk about the creation of Goodyear Heights. In the early 19-teens, as the Goodyear Tire Rubber Company was really exploding and on its way to becoming the largest tire producer by 1916, there is a tremendous amount of people that are flooding into Akron to get jobs in the rubber companies. At Goodyear, as well as many of the other rubber companies um, in the city, there were about 30 at that time. The problem was there was a housing shortage in Akron. There were not enough beds to house all of these people coming in. And in very typical fashion at that point, a lot of the men would come in first, get the jobs, look for an apartment or a house, and then send for their families. You have migrants coming from states like Kentucky, West Virginia, and Western Pennsylvania. You have immigrants coming from overseas, and you have African Americans moving up from the South as part of that great migration where they're looking for better opportunities for their families as well. So all of these people are flooding into Akron, but yet they have nowhere to live. So FA recognized that this was really a significant problem. One, because it just didn't make for a good environment for the city if you have all these kind of single men in town that you know you don't have families to kind of ground people but also it didn't make economic sense for his company because just as fast as he was able to hire people about a third of the workers were turning over because they couldn't buy a house or find an apartment find anywhere to send to bring their families here they would move on to another city where there was kind of a better opportunity where they could more easily buy a home so fa said we have to kind of try to address this crisis in akron so he owned 400 acres adjacent to the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Side, it was all farmland at that point. He approached the board of directors and said, I would like Goodyear to underwrite the cost of building a neighborhood on this land that we can then sell to factory workers. And the board of directors said, absolutely not. We are not interested in getting involved in the private lives of our workers. It's their business. Figure out where they can find a place to live. We are only responsible for their employment, nothing else. And F.A. decided that really wasn't good enough. So he said, I'm just gonna do it myself. So he turned to landscape designer Warren Manning, who actually worked on the landscape design here at Stan Hewitt, to lay out a neighborhood that he then called Goodyear Heights. So he did the first 100 acres in what was called phase one. He hired the New York firm of Mann and McNeil architects to design the homes. And he was very explicit. He did not want this to look like a factory town. He did not want the houses to be uniform. He didn't want the neighborhood to kind of lack personality. So he had them create seven different floor plans that the worker could then choose from. The rule was no two houses that were alike could be next to each other. There are options where you could have kind of the wider part of the house face the front, or you could turn it 90 degrees and have the thinner part of the house facing the front. That was one of those options. You could add porches, you could add shutters, all these different aspects to make your home unique. Most of the house plans had six rooms with a bath on the second floor. So you had three rooms on the first floor, three bedrooms on the second floor with a bathroom. Each house had a fireplace and at least one exterior porch. There also would be a fruit tree in the backyard, room for a vegetable garden, and a shade tree in the front yard. So Goodyear Heights is a very shady neighborhood. It was planted with a lot of trees and that was very intentional because again, F.A. wanted it to feel like an established neighborhood. They opened up a lottery system, so factory workers and Goodyear workers were given first priority, could enter into the lottery to choose a lot. It really, a very, very short time, every lot was taken once the lottery opened. So this really shown some recognition to the board of directors to say, wow, this is a successful project. And they actually took up the call to complete phases two and three, which outlines the current Goodyear Heights neighborhood as we know it today. Most of the purchase prices of the home were around $2,500, and it was also instituted that they would debit five or $6 a week from a worker's paycheck and that would go to paying your mortgage down. And actually for phase one, all of the mortgages were made personally issued by FA. So they were, it was you were buying your lot and your home from FA personally, since it was his project, you weren't kind of buying it from a bank or something. So he really did in every way underwrite the project. 
So it was wildly successful and it galvanized other rubber companies in Akron to follow the same steps. So of course now adjacent to Firestone Rubber Company, we have Firestone Park. So it was, uh, Goodyear was the first to do it, but by no means the last to look towards how can they make the environment of Akron better for the worker and help meet those factory worker needs so that they can establish residency here in Akron and become a long-term part of the city. So thank you so much for joining me for this month's installment about Goodyear history. I look forward to sharing more with you soon next month.